So, so far today, we've learned uh, on a couple t different topics, including generative design, drones, robotics, and VR and the future of making things. Um, our last speaker today is going to share some insight as to how we can become lifelong learners and prepare for this future. And with that, I'm happy to introduce Jamie Perkins to the stage. Um, Jamie is a senior manager of learning strategies here at Autodesk, and his team focuses on content strategy, experience design, and learning research. Uh, Jamie's team is also responsible for um, the learning content strategy of the Autodesk Design Academy website. So take it away, Jamie. Great. Thanks, Jeff. Progress. OK. Um, well, I don't know uh, how everyone's feeling online, but I I'm pretty pumped. You know, the uh, OSEO uh, information that Aaron shared with us, I think the high school kids helping with robotics uh, that was sh shared by Glenn, uh, certainly Eli's work, I think is all like really inspirational. And one of the things that we want to end on here today is how do we bring this all together? Like how do we start to think differently about education, think differently about learning, and think about lifelong learning specifically? And so. Uh, part of what my team focuses on is kind of the breadth of how students and some early professionals learn our tools, but also how they start to reimagine the skills that they need in these industry contexts that are really rapidly changing with robotics, with AR, uh, with uh, AI. And so what we're really trying to think about are rather than just like learning a tool or learning about a spe specific discipline, we think more holistically about what are the kind of skills and uh, soft skills that students need in the future to be able to thrive uh, in the future of work. And so with that, we want to talk a little bit today and just bring this all together and how you can start to uh, better um, sort of understand complex problem solving, creativity and its role uh, in learning and its key and importance in um, the future of work, in the future of uh, design, as well as how you start to work collaboratively and how that is such an important and useful skill. So, future of learning. So we do quite a bit of work within Autodesk Education, thinking about the future of work, the future of learning, and the future of education, frankly. And we've been working on this project uh, recently within my team where we've brought together a number of different divisions from throughout Autodesk. Some of uh, Aaron's Octo partners are, are members here. Uh, certainly some of our uh, digital platform experience teams are partners with us. But really what we're trying to better understand and do a really um, thorough job to explore is this intersection between making and learning. And for us, what we know, and I think what probably comes out of a lot of the different speakers' talks uh, that we've listened to today, is that as we make things, we learn new things about the world, our place in it, uh, the physical uh, nature of things, as well as the nature of ideas. And so we do a lot of work within the team to really start to think about those radical changes of new manufacturing methods and how they enable us to shape the world like never before and the corresponding impact that has on the way that we learn and the way that the things that we make learn us as well as us learning about them and their place in the world. So we do quite a bit of uh, work in R&D at the intersection between making and learning, all with the goal of being able to share these insights with students, being able to share these insights with educators, and certainly be able to share these insights with our industry partners as well. And the reason for it is because in the future of work, there aren't really discipline majors in the same way that there are today. Um, just in the way that we were just uh, learning from Sunan that they created a 19-story or 54-story skyscraper um, in 19 days, they took manufacturing methods, applied it to architecture, creating this transdisciplinary approach that hadn't been done before and created something novel and model and unique. And those are the kind of projects, the kind of experiences that we see uh, being really foundational and really important for students uh, 
and frankly, everyone in the future of work. And so when we say students, we should probably do some work there as well to reimagine what a student is. Because for us, we think uh, everyone's a student. If you're immersed in these industries, you're going to have to relearn these tools every day because they change rapidly. You're gonna to have to reskill every day because your skills in the context using those tools are changing quickly. And in fact, the nature of teams and collaboration is changing dramatically. One of the things that, that sort of uh, drove that home for me is what something Aaron was saying about the collaborations between AI and humans. I mean, you, you each bring something unique to that equation that doesn't exist in isolation. And so we're doing a lot of thinking around the tools, the skills, the mindsets, and the teams of the future. And want to share you with some of our visions for what that, look like, that looks like, as well as how to get involved in some of this learning. Okay, so. As I mentioned, we're doing quite a bit of uh, work at the intersection between making and learning. And PowerPoint advancing is one of those areas we'll take on next. If someone could advance it for me, that'd be fantastic. So the first thing that we started to look at is, um, like, what is a traditional education um, a sort of a, a traditional learning path look like today so we can better understand the kind of experiences our students are having. Um, so traditionally, um, you go to kindergarten and then you go to primary school and then you go to middle school and you go to high school. Um, it's very linear and perhaps then you get a job. If someone could advance the slides, it'd be great. Um, and then maybe you go on to college. And if you get that degree, that degree is your entryway into a profession that can last somewhere up to 40 years. We think with where we're going, if I can have an advance on the slides, um, this if this then model of our understanding of competencies and fixed pathways and majors and disciplines we know that, that the industries are changing so dramatically that the uh, collaborations that are happening between high school students and industry partners, um, between humans and machines, are having a profound impact on uh, this education sector. And so we think it looks more like this, in fact. Uh, that yes, you'll probably still go to kindergarten and in fact probably still go through primary education. Maybe it's in a VR uh, three-dimension way that pops up out of your phone. I don't know, we'll leave that to Bay. Um, but it certainly is lifelong. It certainly uh, happens across a spectrum of experiences and opportunities. And you pick up new tools, new skills, new potentials to collaborate along the way. Next slide, please. Um, so we started to think about, in the team here at Autodesk, reimagining the learner's journey, removing it from this, if this, then this sort of sequence, into something that's much more uh, rich and much more reflective of the future of work, and in fact, the future that is now um, in learning. So the first thing we start thinking about are the skills. OK, well, we have tools here at Autodesk. Um, that are consistently changing and uh, changing constantly. And if you learn them, you open up new opportunities to learn new things, pick up new skills. Um, when you put those two things together, you may have an opportunity to join a new team and work in a new place. And this could be a Centaur team where you're working with an AI agent. It could be uh, a collaborative space where you're working with industry and you're a high school student. Um, there are a variety of mixes here. You don't have to be in a traditionally bound formal education segment to be able to engage in learning across a spectrum like this. Um, what we're starting to think about is how those experiences snap together and where they snap together and what kind of data uh, do we need to be able to sense what those learners are learning that follow them in such a way that we can sort of make profound impacts on their skills and their tools, okay? So we know those things open, open new opportunities and go on and on. And then we started to think about, well, there are tools, certainly, and they're changing rapidly, and they're changing based upon dynamics in industry and technology innovation. There are skills associated with those industries that you certainly get in certain disciplines. Um, but there are also mindsets at the core of this that we think are really important. And so we're starting to do more research into growth mindsets and there are a lot of other researchers doing this work as well. But for us, this is really important because we see it as 
a determinant on the type of success and the type of work that a student or a learner might be able to do in this future of work, which is so dynamic, so um, complicated and complex, um, but also very rich and rewarding. Um, so this fiction for us and the sketches that go along with this narrative are super important for the way that we approach education at Autodesk and the way that we bring solutions together. And so one of the things that we've been doing in the team to reflect lifelong learning is starting to look into some areas that we don't traditionally um, kind of associate with, with learning. And so we've been looking at community-based learning in a very peer-to-peer -peer way, like how can students learn from other students or how can um, industry partners learn from students, perhaps. Uh, we start looking at uh, games and simulations. Uh, so I'm not a gamer myself. We put together a gaming research guild, and so we brought competency and understanding in from the outside and started to work with gamers to better understand how they approach learning because I think the ambient learning that takes place in video games where you're not necessarily reading a set of instructions or being told what to do, you're sort of experiencing it as you move along is really important for us to better understand. And then we looked at games like Journey. I don't know how many of you have ever played this game, but you get paired up with a partner online who you never meet, you never speak to, and you go on a quest together. And so we think that's really informative uh, with respect to the future of learning, the future of working together, that you may not know uh, that person you're collaborating with in an intimate, personal way, but you forge a shared experience with a common goal. Um, and that that can actually lead to very rich embodied learning. Um, so we've been using these explorations over the course of the last several months um, to actually dig a little bit deeper and try to build out learning experiences around our tools um, that are immersive um, and that don't require you to leave the work that you're doing, that you learn in the context. Because one thing that we know about the future of learning, the future of work is that it's ubiquitous, it's everywhere, it's highly connected, um, and it's certainly immersive and situational based and, and contextual, deeply contextualized. So we've used these fictions and these sketches as a way to sort of drive our prototyping and the efforts we do to create courses, to create learning experiences, uh, and to create peer-to-peer -peer learning opportunities across our programs. So I'll show you how this plays out, and we're doing some work right now with our digital uh, platform team to build out some of these experiences within our tools. So that the tools are sensing individuals uh, and that they're keeping track of the way people learn. And so this is a simulation of a learner designing up a set of headphones. Um, what, what we do with a tool like Fusion is the work that you do in this design plane in Fusion, and many of the speakers spoke about their experience in Fusion, is you actually have a timeline down at the bottom. And that timeline in Fusion actually tracks the work that you do. If we only had it now, tracking my thumb pressing on this. Um, whoops, went a little far. Um, but in the background, what we're imagining is that this tool is able to capture that user's data, serve it back to them in a very immersive way that drives them to go deeper into that tool and explore it as it changes and morphs uh, based upon industry request, which is what drives that roadmap for a product like Fusion. So I'll show you one or two more screens here. Um, so as this learner, as this uh, user is going through this tool and rendering out their, their design, what's happening on the back end in a tool like Fusion, it's collecting all that data. And so one of the things that we start thinking about within the context of lifelong learning, um, that you're not a student in a classroom learning Fusion, you are creating and designing something, and as you're designing, you're learning we're imagining serving that information back up to that learner so they can explore deeper and go further into the tool. And we've been working with some industry partners to test these concepts out as training modules, as different ways to engage their audience um, in a tool like Fusion. The other things that we've been working on and sort of trying to better position within the tools to reflect the future of work are these in-context learning. So as I mentioned, learning is ubiquitous, it's immersive. Um, 
We see a lot of learning happen today where you go outside of the work that you're doing to learn something and bring it back into your work. We're imagining ways that that learning of a tool like Fusion, the skills associated with using that tool, and even the collaboration with other users happens right in context. So you don't have to change uh, and go somewhere else to experience that learning. And the other things we're starting to look at are the, the skills that are in professional flows. Um, and so we're starting to create these sort of design and skill dimensions across a variety of different persona types and professional user flows and bringing that understanding back into the way that we design learning experience, um, both around our tools, around the skills, and, and through the industries that we serve. And so these are some of the areas that we're doing a deep exploration in. We're collaborating uh, in this. We're using the cloud, using the tools, and where they're headed to create a better and richer immersive experience. Um, and the last thing that I'll share with you uh, along this line is a another area that we're paying a lot of attention to, and it's this idea of community. So we have a community here uh, called Instructables, and it's one of our uh, education communities. I think there are 40 million or so uh, active individuals in that community. And one of the things that we do often with them uh, is use them as, as a peer-to-peer -peer collaboration network to be able to create new experiences, create new, um, um, designs and have that peer-to-peer -peer, uh, connected experience. And so we're bringing these communal aspects into our tools and trying to use them and better understand how they, uh, how they can inspire and how the community can, can work together. Um, so for some of the work that goes into uh, our thinking around the future of learning and continuous learning, you can find a lot of courses. So we take all of this, uh, we do our research, we work with industry partners, we work with educators, we work with uh, instructors at Carnegie Mellon, for example, and create, create these immersive courses. Our courses exist at a variety of different places. You can find them in MOOC platforms like Coursera, you can find them in Udemy, you can find them in the Design Academy. They're all free, they're all open, they're all reflective of the next generation um, kind of standards and professional flows that we're seeing go through these different industries. And so it's a way of bringing that sort of, you know, third horizon down the, down the road of, of learning and learning platforms into something that is consumable today, where users can go and, and learn things. Um, so that's just some of the stuff that we're doing in Autodesk Education, but it also is deeply reflective of some of the things that you guys were talking about in your talks as well. Um, so the last thing that I want to leave you with here is, um, first of all, just thanking everyone for attending um, our Design Now conference. It's been really fantastic. The speakers were great. We hope you found that uh, they were really valuable and they inspired you to go and design and make. Um, the uh, last thing that we'd like you to ask you to do is uh, see the URL up there, A-U-T-O-D-E dot S-K slash D-N. It's a brief survey. If you could go online on your phone and fill out that survey, that would be fantastic. Um, and then we have some calls for you and some next steps that you can take. There's a webinar coming up on October 18th, the Design Now Drone webinar, where you can learn uh, from Eli, I believe, how to design a, a, a drone. And we have some other courses that will get you up to speed there as well. And then we also have a design, uh, a design for robotics challenge as well. And you can find some information about that here uh, as well. So thank you so much, everyone, for joining. Thank you to the speakers for the amazing job that you did. And goodbye, all. <laughs>